Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to calculate a couple of correlation coefficients for two sets of data sets. Now, we've seen these data sets before, so we don't have to go to the trouble of finding the average, the variances, and the covariances, so we're just going to write them down, but then we're going to calculate the two correlation coefficients, and we're going to interpret the results. So first of all, here are the two data sets. We have the X data set, the Y data set, the average for the X is 6, the average for the Y is 5. The variances for both data sets happen to be the same, 8 and 8. And the covariance between the two data sets is 0 0.8. And we already have a feeling, since it's a very small number, that there's probably not a good correlation between the two data sets. But when we calculate the correlation coefficient, we have a very good way of looking at it. Remember that the correlation coefficient is always going to be somewhere between negative 1 and 1. If it's close to negative 1 or 1, then there's a very strong relationship between the two. Here, the trend will be the same. There, the trend will be opposite, but the opposite trend will be very similar. And if it's a number much closer to 0, then there's not much of a correlation between the two data sets. So let's go ahead and calculate the first one. So we take the covariance, which is 0 0.8, and we're going to divide that by the square root of the variance for x, which is going to be 8, and the square root of the variance of y, which is also going to be 8. So let's see what that's equal to. So first of all, we take the square root of 8, we multiply, oh, actually with square root, right? So the square root of 8, so that would be uh, 8, take the square root, times the square root of 8. That means that this gives us 0 0.8 divided by 8, which is equal to 0 0.1. Now notice the correlation coefficient, r, is very close to 0, which means there's essentially no correlation or very little correlation between the two, da two data sets. You can see that one is steadily increasing by twos, two, four, six, eight, ten. The other one is kind of a random number, a random set of numbers. High, low, medium, low, high. So it doesn't look like there's a trend where the numbers are increasing or decreasing. It's hard to tell. So you have one data set with a very distinguishable trend. The other data set which seemed like a random set of numbers. So you wouldn't expect a lot of correlation between the two. And the result being 0.1 means, yes indeed, very small correlation between the two numbers. Now the covariance between the two data sets being a small number relative to the variances also gave you already a preview or kind of an indication that there's not a lot of correlation between the two. All right, let's take a look at our second data set. Here we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. So you see that one is increasing, the other one is decreasing. So you would expect a negative covariance, and sure enough, we end up with a negative 8 for the covariance. If you want to see how that's calculated, we did that already on some previous videos. But now let's calculate the correlation coefficient relative to these two data sets. So we have the covariance, which is negative 8, divided by the square root of the variance in x, which is 8, and the square root of the variance in y, which is also 8. Of course, the denominator here will be 8, negative 8 divided by 8. That means that the correlation coefficient is negative 1. Negative 1 means a perfect correlation, but, but 1 being increasing and the other data set being decreasing. But in the exact same sense, the method of increase on the one data set should be exactly the same as the method of decrease of the second data set. And of course, by taking a look at it, by seeing 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, exactly the same kind of change except one is increasing the other one is decreasing which yes you would expect a correlation coefficient exactly equal to negative one in this case now you couldn't tell by taking a look at this however realizing that the magnitude of covariance is the same as the magnitude of the variances that also kind of gives you an indication that yes, if you were to calculate the correlation coefficient, you would get, in this case, a negative 1. And if this was a positive 8, you would end up with a positive 1. Very, very strong correlation. Matter of fact, a perfect correlation between the two data sets. And that is why we need to use the correlation coefficient to be absolutely sure how well the two data sets correlate with one another. And that. Can I fill a graph 
I guess I could. All right, let's throw a little graph down, see what that looks like. So when we graph this one right here, it would look like this. So when x is 2, y is 10, right here. And when x is 10, y is 2. And you can see that if you connect all those dots, they are sitting perfectly on a straight line. And you can see because of that, you would expect a perfect correlation. In this case, a negative one because one is increasing while the other one is decreasing. Now, if we do the same over here, let's take a look. So when x is 2, y is 7, right there. And when x is 10, y is 9. And notice, there's no way that I can draw a line through these dots and have them all close together to one another. Or, I shouldn't say it that way. I said, there's no way that I can draw a straight line and have all the points close to that straight line. For example, if I draw a line like this, then these three points are far away from the line. If I draw a line like this, then those points are far from the line. If I draw a line like this, then these two points are far from the line. So since I cannot draw a straight line where all five points are close to the line, there's not going to be a strong correlation between the two data sets. And with an R, the correlation coefficient 0.1, it indicates that, yes indeed, not a strong correlation between those two those uh, five data or those two data sets. Can you already get zero? Yes. Uh, if it's completely random, one versus the other, then you get zero. Yeah, it is possible. Um, yeah, it needs to be a little bit more random than, <laughs> than that to get a zero. But yes, you can get a zero.